And then it, it made you think you were connected, but you weren't. Great morning. That is like so. I, I found this group Facebook over here. It's correct. I think it's my screen. It has to be. What's up? How y'all doing this morning? Oh, we're here. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> this is this is very bright. I don't want to make it fall. All right. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Share the video, please. Good morning from Dallas. Make sure you type in where you're signing in from. We will be in Genesis today, 16, 1 through 4. This is the story we're most familiar with, I would think. When Sarah decides to tell Abram, you can just have my hand made. Uh, you said you were looking for me. I'm here. Thank you for saying I did great on yesterday. We got a, a, a good day lined up today as well. We'll be coming back on live later on today to show y'all some more things. It's good to see you. Thank you for your support on yesterday. Did y'all enjoy Sunshine's dance? Did she not do amazing yesterday? Impromptu. Improv. It was awesome. I love you all. Uh, we will be in Genesis today, 16, 1 through 4. Let's go ahead and go into prayer before we do anything else. I love you all. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. What time is it? I K O R S. All right, 6.04. Central Standard Time. Y'all saw the dance. You enjoyed it. Great. I love you all. Tell the Lord our good is this morning. Type it in and say, Father, you are good. Lord, you are good. We thank you for life this morning. You ready? Father, we just honor you for this day. We honor you for this time. We honor you for your word. We honor you for your Holy Spirit. We honor you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the city of Chicago. Y'all type in a prayer for Chicago. Lord, we cover Chicago in your blood. Lord, thank you for sending us here. And not just Chicago, Lord, but the state. Father, we just cover Illinois in your blood today, Father God. And we just thank you that every demonic influence, Lord God, is being frustrated right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for air in our lungs today. Lord, we just thank you for your spirit. Holy Spirit, come in. Teach us this word this morning. Uh, many need to be encouraged, including myself. Father God, it gets hard sometimes when we're waiting on you to move. But Lord, let us learn from this example the importance of staying in position. Warrior Nation, type in, Lord, I will stay in position I will wait on you, Lord. I will wait on your promise. I don't care how long it takes. Lord, I won't get ahead of you. Even when it seems like you're taking entirely too long, Father God, I will wait on you. Holy Spirit, we need a word. You have the Lord of our souls, Father God, and lift of our heads. And Holy Spirit, we need a word today. Speak through me. Your people need to hear from you. Lord Jesus, you are our master and our savior and our true and risen king. And we thank you for the work of the cross. We thank you for the blood that you shed. We thank you that that blood has given us access into the holy of holies. We thank you that because of the sacrifice that you made, that you laid down your life for hours, that we have the gift of eternal life for those who accept you as Lord and savior. And so we just thank you today. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, all that you're about to do. Holy Spirit, just breathe on us this morning. Let a fresh wind blow and a fresh fire fall upon your people, Lord. Let us run for you like never before. Let us begin to pray like never before. Just knit us so close together, Lord, the warrior nation family that literally one cannot fall for the other. Lord, let us bear the burdens of the weak, Father God. Break our hearts for the things that break yours. Lord, we ask you to stretch this video far and wide. There are people out there right now on social media, Lord, who are just in darkness. They don't know you. Jesus, you're not their savior. And so we pray that today will be the day that many, Lord God, will come to know you and accept you as their Lord and savior. Father, we love you. We praise you and you bless, we bless you. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, Warrior Nation. God is awesome. This week in Chicago has just been life-changing for me. I apologize for the overexposure on Facebook. Regardless of where we put the camera, it still does it. So we're just going to say it's a Shekinah glory falling on me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I love you all very much. Remember, we're still doing our clearance uh, special in our store. Uh, it's SAVE 50% on our clearance collection using the discount code SAVE50. S-A-V-E-5-0. Thank you because a lot of you all have been shopping even early this morning. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for still supporting us even when we're in Chicago. Uh, we really appreciate it. Remember, this is how we fund wars both through our store and through our ministry. It's so we thank you that when you decide you want to browse the internet today and you want to shop, stop by warrior-apparel.org. You already know what we represent. You know that we are using that to fund wars, the finances from that to fund wars. And so we just thank you all for your support on that. Um, the weather forecast here in Chicago, a high of 83, a low of 70 today. It feels good here. It really does. 
it feels good here a lot different from home it's hot at home y'all like super hot but the highest 83 the lowest 70 it says it feels like 87 but it doesn't feel like our 87 at home i can assure you the sun came up at 5 32 a.m and it goes down at 8 21 p.m and i named this when god takes too long amen we are walking in wealthy places Remember, next year, 2019, is our year of elevation. I'm very excited about that because last year was the year of the manifested promise. And God brought so many of y'all to this ministry last year. He did so much last year. What did God do for you last year? What has he done for you this year? This year, we said we were walking wealthy places. And even though we haven't seen a full manifestation of that, I know that it's happening, y'all. And it doesn't just mean finances. We're also walking in a wealth of wisdom and in favor and in understanding. And we thank God for that. And then the Lord gave me about a week ago, a week and a half ago, that 2019 will be the year that we are elevated. It will be the year of elevation that God's going to do some things that we didn't even think to pray for. Can y'all catch that word and hold on to it in your heart even now as we go into the last half of 2018, that next year is going to be your year to be elevated, that God's going to blow your mind with some things that you didn't even think to pray for or fast for. I just feel that in my spirit this morning that God's about to do something. And it's beyond anything that I could have asked for. It's beyond anything that I could have even thought to fast for. Beyond anything that I could have envisioned. I just feel like next year is going to be a very powerful year. A year of increase. A year of elevation. A year that we will really gain ground uh, for the sake of the gospel. For the sake of the kingdom. We're going to gain ground. I just feel it in my spirit this morning. And so I thank God for that vision for next year. It's amazing as a leader. God gives you an edge. You, you know what's ahead to a certain degree. And I'm thankful for it. And Warrior Nation, we will not let anything stop us. Type it in. It's too late, devil. You lose again. Like whatever might would have stopped us last season, it will not stop us in this season. So I thank you all this morning. Let's jump into this word. It's not long. Um, most of us are familiar with this, but we're in Genesis 16, 1 through 4. Sarah made a, Sarah and Abraham made a terrible mistake here. You ever made one? Have you ever gotten ahead of God? And you realized it like right after you did it? Like I really probably shouldn't have done that. And then the whole thing backfires and you know you missed him. But that's okay. Here we go. God had given Abram a promise. And he's given us a promise. Say, it's too late, devil. You lose again. Please share the video. So we're in Genesis 16. Are we flowing good over here on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just want to make sure because I see the numbers are stuck at the top. Yes. All right. Praise God. Y'all ready? Here we go. Sorry for shaking you. Here we go. Genesis 16, 1 through 4. It says, now Sarah, Sarai, Abram's wife, had not been able to bear children for him. But she had an Egyptian servant named Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, the Lord has prevented me from having children. That's deep right there. The Lord has prevented me from having children. Go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her. And Abram agreed with Sarah's proposal. So Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian servant, and gave her to Abram as a wife. In parentheses, it says, This happened 10 years after Abram had settled in the land of Canaan. In four. So Abram had sexual relations with Hagar, and she became pregnant. But when Hagar knew she was pregnant, she began to treat her mistress, Sarai, with contempt. So we'll, we'll get into the second part of that last verse about her uh, mistreating Sarah on tomorrow. Before today, let's just focus on the first part of that and on one through beginning of four. And the fact that Sarah says, the Lord has prevented me from having children. And I was just thinking about that this morning and reading it and studying it. We talked about this when I did the message, I, I have enough. Um, it's like no matter how much we have, it's like our nature to focus on what we don't have. It's just like yesterday we went to see, what is the thing, Adriana, a bean? The bean. The bean. Anybody has been to Chicago, any tourist or anybody that is a Chicago native or whatever, you know what the bean is. And so Adriana wanted to see it so bad, Lee, that we took her to see the bean. And as I was walking up to the bean, you could see all these families smiling, taking selfies. I mean, little kids running around playing, couples grinning at each other and kissy face and I and I'm walking up to the bean and for a moment I was like wow look at these happy families and in that same moment I kid you not it's like I told myself that's all right you're gonna have a happy family too because it's like in that moment in the midst of being here in Chicago in the midst of doing great work for the Lord in the midst of having an amazing interview and doing an amazing documentary we had already done those things it's like in that moment with the huge wins this week 
when I saw those families and those couples smiling and taking pictures together, in my heart, I was like, wow, they're happy. As if I'm not. But it's like, that's what the enemy wants you to see. He wants you to see the one thing that you may not have at this moment. And I literally say, oh, I will have this. I will have this. Like, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the enemy has tried to convince me of. I will have this. And so I had to tell myself, you're going to have this. So lift your head back up, smile, and go take your selfie. Because you're going to have this too. And what's my point? Sarah began to focus on the one thing she did not have. These are some of the things that she did have. This is what I read in the commentary. She had fair skin. Okay, I guess that's a plus. All right, we know that was a plus back then. She had fair skin. This is actually in the commentary. She was an agreeable and dutiful wife. She was a good wife to Abraham. Come on now, he was 75 when the Lord called him out of Ur. And we don't see where she gave him any trouble. She literally packed up her things to support her husband. Um, she was a sharer in his wealth. Y'all, Abraham was rich, okay? He was silly rich even before he went to Egypt. And then he got richer. And so she was able to share in all that wealth. Like, Sarah, you had everything. Girl, you had fair skin. You had a great husband. You had money. And yet, she was childless. And it's like the one thing you don't have is the one thing that becomes so emphasized in your life if you are not careful. And because of that one thing that she did not have, she was like, listen, the Lord has prevented me from having children. And I just believe it. It's all through scripture that the Lord will literally allow you not to have something. It doesn't mean it's forever, but for whatever, a season or whatever, just to keep you humble, to keep you before him. Literally, if you had it all, would you, would you come to Jesus? Some people would. A lot of people probably would not. If you literally had everything that you could think of, every, every time you pray, boom, you got it. How much time would you really spend in his presence? But we can't come to God just for things. We, we have to come to God because we love him, because we desire to be in his presence. But you get my point that if he literally dropped everything in that moment, a lot of things, if he gave it to us right then, we could not even handle it. Just like I give the example of my son. Y'all know what he did with my van. Y'all know I had a Honda Odyssey. I named her Faith. I loved her. She, she meant a lot to me. And my son kept harassing me for a vehicle. Just harassed me. Mom, why can't I drive? Why can't I drive? Mom, let me drive. I was like, I'll tell you what. Even though I don't want to, I'm going to let you use my precious van. Faith, she means a lot to me. I'm going to need you to be careful. You mean a lot to me too. I'm going to need you to only go where I say you can go. Don't jump in this vehicle and do anything else. And so for a whole month, we argued. Because every time I looked up, this boy had jumped in my van. It was gone. Oh, mom, I just went around the block because so-and-so needed a way home and her mom wouldn't pick her up. I'm like... That's her child. You're my child, and I'm your mother, and I appreciate you caring so much about your friends, but I need you to stay put, and he just cannot understand. I'm like, Christian, every time you get in my vehicle, you are a liability, which means every time you pick up your friends and you load them up in my vehicle, all y'all become a liability. I don't care how close you are to your friends. If something happens, you don't know what a parent might do. You don't know how their relationship can turn if something happens, and so I kept trying to explain to him you know, just how important it was to be careful in my vehicle, and yet he didn't listen. And then I give, I take the vehicle and I give it back on the next to the last day of school. And he decides he's hungry and goes to Wendy's and backs back into another vehicle. A scrape on my bumper equal a whole total, a total, to, total. They total my vehicle because the airbags deployed in a Wendy's parking lot. He couldn't have been going more than like three miles per hour. And then he didn't, and then in that moment, he was like, oh, I am so sorry, mom. But that was my point. I was not trying to be mean to my child. He just was not ready to drive yet. I don't care about him being, he was 17, 18. So I didn't feel like he was mature enough. And I'm his mother. And I think I know best. I know more than he does. I've lived longer than him. And I just knew Christian was not ready for that vehicle. I just knew it. And then he told me his friend got a brand new BMW for graduation. I said, good for her. You won't be getting one anytime soon because he's not ready for a BMW. What's my point? It's not that God was not going to give Abram, Ham, and Sarah this child, this promised seed. But for whatever reason, because we are not God, he simply had not given it to them yet. And yet she comes to her husband and she says, God has prevented me from having a child. Yes, he's the one who opens our wombs. He's the one who gives life. He is creator God. He's the only one that can give us 
us life. He's the only one that can place a seed in our wombs, ladies, and allow that seed to grow. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. And so, yes, for a season, I know she was old. I know that it seemed like it was not going to happen. But God kept telling Abram, it's going to happen. But what did he do in this moment? He was like, okay, cool. No, Abraham, no, no. This is not the right answer. What Abram should have said, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. We can look at this story and easily say, Abram, you know God was going to do it. You're going to have Isaac. Abram couldn't see Isaac. All he could see was the fact that they were childless and they were old. Abraham was 86 when Ishmael was born. We'll get into that more tomorrow and on next week. God moved him at 75. He waited what is that? 11 years. Still no child. How long have you been waiting? How long have you been waiting? How long have you been waiting? On God to fulfill that promise to you. And when it seems like God is taking too long. Y'all, we still can't get ahead of him. It's going to equal disaster. I wrote a couple things down. It says from a commentary, God dispenses his gifts variously. Loading us up with benefits, but does not overload us. That's deep. Let me say it again. God dispenses. This is Matthew Henry speaking. This is not Kelly Lane. I wish I could take credit for this, but I'm not. I'm not this brilliant. Listen. It says, God dispenses his gifts variously. Loading us with benefits, but does not overload us. And that's what I mean. You can have this, this, and this, but there'll be one thing you don't have. Doesn't mean it's not going to give it to you. It's just not time yet. Type it in. It's just not time yet. If you don't have it, it's just not time yet. It's not time to be bitter or angry. Keep pressing, keep believing, keep praying, keep fasting, keep blessing his name, keep worshiping him. But just know that God says in his word, I would not withhold any good thing from those who love me. So if he has not released that thing to you yet, it's either not time yet or he has something better for you. Okay? So it's not a time to give up. We should rejoice. We should be excited. We should know, okay, if God has done it, that means he has something even better than what I asked for. Well, he's going to do it in a way that's going to bring the most glory and honor to his name. God dispenses his gifts variously, loading us up with benefits, but does not overload us. I wrote, everyone has a cross to bear. Everyone has a cross to bear. And it's that cross. It's the thing that you have to bear that keeps you grounded, that keeps you totally reliant on God, knowing that he is the author and the finish of our faith. And in the end, y'all, he is making the story of our lives beautiful. So in this moment, Sarah, they became impatient. Even though God kept telling Abraham, I am going to give you an heir. It won't be Eliezer from Damascus. Abraham, it won't be your servant. It won't be Hagar, who they probably got from Pharaoh, from Egypt. That is not who's going to give you your promised seed. You just got to be still and know that God is God, even when it seems like the thing that he has promised you will not come to pass. So what am I saying as one worry nation? We have to wait. Let's bear our crosses and let's wait. But while we're waiting, we worship, we praise, we bless his name. And you know what I do while I wait? I'm sure you probably have noticed. I just keep talking about how God's going to do it. I'm like, one day we're going to pack out the streets. We're going to do prayer crusades. This has been my heart for years. And I get so excited about it because I know it's going to happen. It may not happen today. It may not happen tomorrow. It could. God could do anything. He can show up at any time. He can move at any time. Get excited about it. Brag about what God is going to do. That's what I do. It's like, I'm going to be happy. Matter of fact, I'm happy right now. I rejoice in what I do have because I didn't. I don't have to have what I do have. Yeah, there's some things that I would like to see happen, but in the meantime and in between time, I'm going to give him a yet praise. I'm not going to wait until all the conditions of my life are perfect because I will be waiting a mighty long time. But I talk about it. I get excited about it. I, I run around. I scream and laugh and jump like it has already happened. What did we learn on yesterday? What did we learn? That was so deep on yesterday about the smoking pot and the flame, that that smoking pot was a representation of the affliction that the Israelites were going to have to go through for 400 years. But that flame was the light of the word. It was the light of the promise that God had given Abraham. And what did it say? That he had already, he, he said, I have given your descendants this land. Even though it wasn't going to manifest for 400 years, the Lord said, I have given it to them. And even though your promise is not manifested yet, the promise that God has given you may not have manifested. Guess what? He's already given it to you. It's just a matter of time before you see the full manifestation of that promise. So this is no time to cry about it. This is no time to feel wounded, weary, 
weary or sad. There's no time to get impatient. This is certainly no time to get ahead of God. And so I pray this morning for all of us. We interceded for y'all this morning. Lord, don't let us get ahead of you. Type it in and say, God, do not allow me to get ahead of you. Because that is a huge recipe for disaster when you move ahead of God. We have to wait on his timing. And even when we don't understand it, Father, I don't understand it. But I still trust your timing. I still believe that you're just perfecting all things that concern me. And when you're perfecting something, perfection takes time. God is perfecting all that concerns you. I thought about the scripture this morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of every single one. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. We are going to go through some things. This hurt Sarah and Abraham to their core. They had all of this. And y'all, listen, they were old. Y'all, they were old. Okay, I'm talking about like, not older, but old. They were like, Abraham was like almost 100. Okay, Sarah was in her 90s. So, you know, I don't know any way other than them that had children at that age. So you can see how they felt a tad bit restless and wanted to help God out because they were old. And for God to fulfill this promise, he would have had to break the laws of nature. He would have had to break protocol. But God will break protocol for you and for me whenever he gets ready. He made the rules. He can break the rules. He can do whatever he wants to do. And so don't. Limit your belief in what God can do based on natural reasoning. Because God can step in at any moment and do exactly what he has promised you. And if he promised you, he will make it good. I pray this morning. Share the video, please. Right now, share it. The prayer this morning is that we will not get ahead of God, even when it seems like he's taking too long. Even when it sounds like he's taking too long. Let's not get ahead of God. I prayed and prayed. I, I posted so many videos before one went viral. Every single time I posted a video, I said, this is it. And it wasn't. And when I literally least expected a video that I least expected, God breathed on it. And it went viral. I have been praying for a viral video for years. People are like, you praying for what? Girl, please. That is not going to happen. And I would say, Lord, for your name's sake, will you just stretch it out for your name's sake, Lord? Because I know the world needs prayer. And I would say, Lord, I know the world needs prayer. And I would pray Boom, nothing would happen. I'm like, oh, God. And then just like that, within two weeks, God released two. God really will give you double for your trouble. If you would just fight the good fight of faith and not give up, when you least expect that God will show up, and he will literally give you double just for your trouble, double of what you asked for, just because you're waiting, you didn't throw in the towel because it seemed like God was not going to do it. That's why the Bible says, don't, don't grow weary in your well-doing. That's why he says, don't grow weary in your well-doing for a due season. You will reap a reward if you faint, not if being a condition, which means we do have the option to faint. But type it in, I will not faint. I will not faint. I'm going to wait on the promise of the Lord to manifest in my life. I'm not going to move ahead of him. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to do things my own way and then say it's God. We have to be really careful with that. We have to be very careful to know that it's God and it's not our own hands. And so sometimes, y'all, you simply have to take your hands off of situations and let God do it. And that way you will know it's God. But warrior nation, listen to me. We have a great work to do. I'm about to go into prayer. But what I've learned, especially recently, I could dwell on the things in my life that are imperfect. But I'm really, I was telling the team last night, I was telling Sunshine and Brittany, I said, I am truly standing on. You know, you have a scripture that you stand on, a scripture that you stand on in different seasons of your life. Uh, for years, and I still stand on it. I stood on 1 Peter 5 and 10, and I, and I still stand on it. It's after you suffer for a while, God will perfect you and settle you and establish you, which means the suffering is not forever. It's for a season, right? But in this season, I'm also firmly standing on Matthew 6 and 33. Check this before we go into prayer. Seek ye first the kingdom of God is righteousness, and everything else shall be added. What does that mean? Seek ye first the kingdom of God is righteousness, and everything else shall be added. Oh, so you mean the things in my life that are just jacked up, the things that are incomplete, the things that I don't understand? If I truly seek your kingdom first, if your kingdom becomes my top priority, if I seek you first and everything that concerns you, do you mean you're going to work out? the holes, the spotty areas in my life that are incomplete. If Sarah had just seeked the Lord and stayed in that place, she wouldn't have had time to come up with another plan of how she was going to help God out. See, the thing is, God is not needy. Um, he actually does not need me or you. And he can replace me 
in the blink of an eye if he wanted to. So we should never feel like, oh, we're the man or the woman that God can't replace because he can. And I'm saying to say he's not needy, which means he actually doesn't need us. We need him, right? But if Sarah, which means God didn't need Sarah's help. God did not need Abraham's help in getting with Hagar and producing an Ishmael. Because what happens when we get ahead of God and we help him out, we produce Ishmael's. And we're not trying to produce Ishmael's. We're trying to produce promises. Isaac's. Do you want an Ishmael? Because you couldn't sit down and wait? Or do you want an Isaac? A promised, blessed seed that's still turned over to now, to 2018. We don't want Ishmael's. We want Isaac's. And when you get ahead of God, and you do your own thing, and you compromise the promise, so you can speed it up, and you think you're helping God out, what are you going to get? An Ishmael. And we do not want Ishmael's. Okay? So we're going to wait on God. We're not going to help him out. We're going to help ourselves out by staying in a posture of prayer, by keeping the faith when it seems like it's not going to happen. Remember, it was by Abraham's faith. He only had a little bit that God counted him as righteous. You don't have to have a lot, remember? Size of a mustard seed. You ever seen how small a mustard seed is? Google it if you didn't buy the faith bracelet, ladies, and see how small a mustard seed is. It's all the faith you have to have. Let's go into prayer. Father, we thank you this morning. We do not want Ishmael's, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we want Isaac's. And Isaac's take time. Isaac's take time. And we will wait on you, Father. Even when it seems like you're taking too long, we trust that your timing is perfect because you are the author and finisher of our faith. And you know the end from the beginning. So, God, we wait on you. We will not give up. We will not cut the line. And we will not try to help you out. You're sovereign. You're sufficient. And your providence is all that we need. And so we, we yield to your divine providence today, Father. I ask you now to go put the warrior nation, make every rugged path smooth, every crooked place straight, and bring every high place low. Father, I thank you that no weapon fun against them shall prosper, and every tongue that's risen up against them shall be condemned. Father, I thank you for enlarging our territories. I thank you, God, that we are walking in wealthy places. I thank you, God, for favor and wisdom. I thank you for open doors that you're opening for the warrior nation right now. Things they didn't even think to pray about. Those things, God, I thank that you're even doing those things right now. God, give them favor with you and with man. Father, God, things that money could never buy, give them those types of things that only favor can give them, Lord. Let your hand rest upon them in a way they've never experienced before. Father, God, just let a fresh wind blow and a fresh fire fall upon every single one of us, Lord. Lord, we just want an even deeper level of your anointing of your power, of your spirit. Let us hear your voice, Lord, in a way that we've never heard it before, God. Let us not walk out of our homes today without you, Jesus. Let us take you everywhere that we go. We thank you for today. Lord, please bless the warriors and their generosity. God, they're the most generous people I've ever met, the, mo the most supportive people that I've ever met. Father, I thank you for everyone who will continue to support this ministry and that has supported this ministry, Lord, that you will multiply every seed they sow back to them a thousand times over. For everyone who shops at Warrior Apparel, God, they can shop anywhere, but they choose to shop with us. Father, I ask you to bless them. For every t-shirt that they buy, every bracelet, every cup, every blanket, whatever it is, God, every decal, Father, thank you that you're touching their hearts to support us, and in doing so, we're able to fun wars and we thank you for it god we ask you to multiply every dollar they spent back to them a thousand times over father for those of us who trust you with the tithe you said in your word that you opened the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we don't even have the room to receive god we thank you for the overflow today father we honor you for it right now god we thank that you will always give seed to the sore and so we stand on that today father help us to seek you first Everything else becomes secondary. Lord, we want what you want for us, God. We lay down our own agendas, our own wheels, and we pick up the wheel that you have for us. And we thank you for God, for the hope and future that we have in you. And God, as we step into this dark and perilous world today where your full armor, the better truth around our ways, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, God, we were standards of peace. We carry the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit of your word. Let your word be hidden in our hearts that we will not sin against you. And if you're out there this morning and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, guess what? You can do it right now. And it's so exciting because the angels in heaven will rejoice over you right now if you just simply give God a yes. There's some people out there today on this video. I know you're out there. God would not have me do this. And you simply need to give God a yes today, a yes to his will and a yes to his way. And with that, if you simply say, Father God, I'm a sinner and I desire to be saved. Warrior Nation, help us by typing it in. Father God, I'm a sinner. And I desire to be saved. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And that he died, he was buried, and rose on the third day. That's what it takes. If you believe that, and you simply say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I need a Savior. 
Just like that, the Bible tells us that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Warrior Nation, share this video right now, please. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible does not say, come when you're perfect. No, no, we can actually come just the way we are and trust that God will perfect everything that concerns us. And so if you just give God a yes today, God will do the rest. And if you made the decision today, and I know somebody made it. I know somebody made it. And if you made the decision, we joined it with the angels today and we rejoice and we welcome you to the family, the family of believers, the household of believers, where you now have the gift of eternal life because heaven is real and hell is real. God is real. No matter what the world may tell you, there is a savior named Jesus Christ. And it is the only way to enter into heaven. It is through Jesus Christ. There's no other way except that way. The Bible tells that Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. And and no one enters in unless we go through him. And so if you made the decision today, we rejoice with you and we thank you. Warrior Nation, I love you all so much. We'll be coming back on live later on. We have some things lined up for today. But remember, we will be buying this house in India very soon. The first week of August, we're going to buy this house. Type in, we bought the house. Let's speak it out into existence. We bought the house. Listen, whatever you can give. If you can give $100 today towards this house, you just can simply give it as an offering. We're going to put it towards the house. You can help us get there. Because I'm telling you, if you would just do that, we can have the house bought. Um, so if you're able to do that, if you can't do it all at once, break it up. And we got a couple more weeks to do that. But please, just give your best towards this, y'all. This is so, it's, this is deep. And it's deeper than you realize. It's deeper than I realize. This seed is going to turn over as long as the earth remains. Because we're going to buy a house for some little boys and little girls who will otherwise be on the street. Who would not know about Jesus. But because we are doing this for this ministry, these little boys and little girls are going to grow up. And they're going to be disciples in a dark nation. And they're going to be able to tell other people about Jesus. And so we're planting this seed and it's going to reap a bountiful harvest for the kingdom and for you and for me. Several easy ways you can give on Facebook is the blue donate button. All you do is click that button. It's secure giving. You can go to PayPal, everybody, and use the email give at kellylane.org. You can also go to the website, kellylane.org. If you need prayer for anything at all, submit your prayer request there. Also, give is an investment. We are funding wars. Type it in. We are funding wars. We also have a text phone number. That number is 601-844-0024. I'm believing with you over here for your child to attend SCAD because my son will be attending SCAD and it is a fortune and I believe in God for a breakthrough for my child and yours because tuition is thousands. I think it's like out of pocket $43,000 a year for my child, but that is nothing for God. $43,000 is a drop in the bucket and whatever you need for your daughter, it's a drop in the bucket. So, hey, let's let's get an agreement. I'm with you. We believe in God for a miracle for our children to go to school. So, y'all, you know how I go in and out, but I saw that and I couldn't miss it. Uh, Oh, what? oh, yeah, you can send it through the mail using P.O. Box 16257, uh, Jackson, Mississippi 39236. All checks and money orders, please make them out to Warrior Nation Ministries. Y'all, if your children are about to go to college and you need a miracle, Warrior Nation, stand with us who need a miracle because I need one for my kid. But God is able. I'm not even worried about it. He starts very soon. It's like, God, he starts soon. That means you're going to come through. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know my child is worth it. So I'm standing with you. You're standing with me. Let's, let's believe that God is just going to provide supernatural provision for our children to go to college. Okay? Um, SCAD is a very prestigious college. It's an art school. And God's going to do it. I'm not even worried about it. He starts in September. I just know when September comes, my boy will be in class sitting in his desk. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I believe that. And all I can see is him being there and God's going to do that thing. So that being said, I love you. If you need a miracle for tuition, type it in. We'll stand with you today. Matter of fact, we need to probably start praying that until school starts. So standing with you on that. Y'all, thank you for giving. Also, please go by Warrior Apparel, warrior-apparel.org, and shop over there today. And also check out the clearance collection. It is 50% off. Save 50, S-A-V-E 50 is the discount code. Uh, that house for those little boys, little girls in India, we call it paid in full in Jesus' mighty name. Did I get everything? Mm -hmm. Got a busy day today. I'll check in with y'all later. I love you. Have a miraculous day, okay? All right. Y'all need miracles for tuition. All right, we're with you. We're going to believe together. Okay.